Everyone wanted to see what the truck and the trailer look like hitched up together? This is what it looks like. Yes, the fifth wheel is filthy. That is actually three days after being washed and being in this storage facility. So hey guys, I am here at the RV, hitched up to the 450. What we are doing today is swapping out this Easy Flex equalizer right here, and we're going to be putting in the new Moride SRE 4000 suspension system. So this entire assembly right here is going to be gone. Now another thing that I'm going to be doing is swapping out these shackle hangers with a much thicker Moride half inch thick hangers. So the entire suspension is really going to be beefed up. Now one of the really unique aspects of the Moride system is that it includes a cross brace. So we'll be adding a reinforcement brace bar from this hanger here all the way across to the other and it will be bolted in place and it's supposed to significantly stiffen up the suspension as well as add reinforcement um, to prevent failure. Anyways, the project should take a few hours. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long it's going to take. I'm going to be using some equipment that I received uh, several months ago to actually jack up the fifth wheel. And that would be these safe jacks. So the reason why I got two of them was to specifically do the work on the RV. So I'd be able to lift up both sides. They're six tons each, which basically gives me 12,000 pounds capacity for each one, which should be more than enough for the back. I also have these scissor jacks made by Husky. These are incredibly robust scissor jacks. What I'm going to do with these, I'm going to mount these on the back of the fifth wheel to act as kind of a reinforcement or stabilizer while we have these jacks underneath. This is the setup that we'll be installing. Again, this is the Moride SRE 4000. This utilizes a large rubber bushing here in the center. I believe you get four inches of suspension travel. They are going to increase the height of the fifth wheel by about an inch and a half, uh, according to what I've seen on other installs, but it's, uh, it's gonna be worth it because again, it's supposed to significantly reduce any shock inside of the fifth wheel, given the fact that I also have shocks on my fifth wheel. So a couple of these together, it should make for a really good setup. These are going to be the shackle straps that we're putting on, half inch thick. Um, these are uh, grease zerks built into them. So these are wet bolt kit and this should greatly, greatly improve the reliability of the suspension components. Here's that cross brace that I was telling you about that'll be installed. That runs between the suspension. It's a two-piece kit, so they'll be linked together, and they will essentially act as a brace between the equalizer brackets. So we're going to go ahead and get started and put these safe jacks to use. These things lift this trailer pretty easy, don't they? Yes, it does. So we are using the adjustable extension right here in the center hole and then there's smaller extension and the flat plate up here directly against the frame really makes this job a lot easier than trying to figure out another way to do it and the back tire i think is off the ground we're very close to it i'm going to go up a little bit further and then i'm going to add the scissor jack just for stability and safety So let me show you what we got going on here. This was the reason why I got the safe jack. So with all these extensions, I was able to reach the frame. It took roughly 24 and a half, 25 inches to get from the ground to the frame. So your traditional bottle jack isn't really gonna cut it. If you're trying to lift the frame, you can't lift from the axles, of course, because that would kind of defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do since we need to take the weight off of the suspension. All right, guys, we're starting the process of lifting up the trailer. I have these Husky 6,500 pound scissor jacks, one in the back here. I have my two safe jacks here and my other Husky jack up front. These Husky jacks are overbuilt. They are definitely the route you wanna go if you're gonna be doing this. They are much more robust as far as the steel gauge, the thickness and just the quality in general. And the reality is they could actually lift the RV up on their own. But just to play it safe, what we're doing is we're using these six ton safe jacks with all the extensions to lift it up. And then we're using the scissor jacks to stabilize it in place. So these things are working really well. 
They actually lift the trailer individually without any problem. As you can see, they do a really good job. This is the base plate that you put underneath it to help stabilize it. They give you some screws and bolts to, you know, secure that there. But because I'm on a pretty level surface, at least right here, I really don't need to worry about the jack coming out from underneath. All these different adjustments really come in handy when it comes to lifting an RV, mainly because the frame is usually about 24 inches off the ground at least. In regards to the front of the trailer, it's actually hitched up to the truck, and that gives me the articulation I need without putting too much stress on the landing gear. As you can see, because we're lifting this side of the trailer, it's causing the hitch to articulate slightly to the passenger side, which is fine. We have the landing gear down, but not completely. And that's just an extra precautionary step we're taking in case something happens and they, you know, might assist it from tipping over or whatnot. So I've positioned a 12-ton bottle jack right underneath the U-bolt on the axle to be able to adjust the axle up and down. Now, you really don't need much there, and I'm not putting much on that jack. Um, you're just wanting to articulate the axle up and down as much as you need so you can access the equalizer. Now, I thought that these would still be under load, but as soon as we took pressure off of the tires and axles, I mean, all the components essentially move now. So this whole piece right here is essentially free. All I need to do is unbolt everything and drop it down, put the new one in place, hopefully. So something I wanted to mention that we're doing real quick, if you all recall from a previous video, I installed these Lippert Never Fail bushings. And after installing them, I was told that you're never supposed to put any grease on these to install them because the grease can actually break the material down. So the Moride kit comes with these brass bushings. We are removing the Lippert Never Fail bushings and installing these brass bushings in their place with the wet bolt kit. A little bit more maintenance, but at the same time, they should probably never fail. So we have the old equalizer out. This is a Dexter Easy Flex, putting in the Moride SRE 4000. And this is simply gonna mount right up here. We'll put some existing hardware back in, put everything in place. This already has the bushings inside of these, uh, these holes. So we should be good to go. So we've completed the install. We have both the driver side as well as the passenger side installed, along with this cross brace in the center. It goes all the way across, tightens with eight bolts, and it basically just attaches to both of the hanging brackets for the equalizers. The install was pretty simple, actually. The, the hardest part was figuring exactly how we wanted to stabilize the RV and lift it up but these should work really well in conjunction with the Joyrider suspension system that I have as well. Supposedly these will give me up to four inches of suspension travel. Coming around to the driver's side, you can see how we installed the setup here, as well as the cross brace going all the way across. Definitely can't say enough uh, for the good folks at SafeJack. I have two of these safe jacks that I use to lift up the fifth wheel. We did one side at a time um, as to just create more of a stable working environment. I would say it took about an hour and a half per side to do the install, plus the removal of the old equalizer and the removal of the Lippert bushings. Um, the nicest thing about the safe jack system is just the fact you get all those extensions and they came in really, really handy. We also utilized their plate here that gave us the, you know, the steady base that we would need to lift the fifth wheel up. We are gonna take this thing for a drive, see how it performs, of course, after we clean up our mess, and I will be right back. Gotta admit, trailer looks really good behind the truck.
So hey everyone, so we are completely done installing the Moride SRE 4000 trailer suspension system with cross brace. If you're looking at doing a similar upgrade on your own, I believe the parts are about $800 in that range and the installation would probably run you another three to four hundred dollars depending on where you get it done and uh, who does it for you. But we're just doing a little drive test right now just to make sure everything feels good. We don't have any any problems to worry about. Um, what I can tell you right off the bat is it is going to raise the fifth wheel up slightly. I think it was about an inch and a half that we noticed um, in regards to where it hung versus the Dexter Easy Flex that was on before. Also, you do want to be aware that when you raise your trailer up to remove the Easy Flex or whatever equalizer you have, because the Moride system does hang down lower, you'll have to raise it up even higher. Otherwise, you won't have room to install your shackle straps um, to secure the system. Another thing, when you're putting the bolts in place for your shackles, the, the actual bolts that go through the shackle plates, keep in mind you don't want to over torque them. We actually ran into a scenario where we stripped one out. Um, fortunately, it wasn't the end of the world because we had a spare. However, what you do want to keep in mind is that when you tighten them, they are self-locking. They actually have a pinch at the end of them. So even though you may look at the end of that flange of the nut and it looks smooth and you're wondering how they self-fasten onto the bolt plate, you don't have to worry about that because they, they actually pinch the end of it slightly, which gives it that, that locking effect. Otherwise, you know, I'm going over some rough areas here. I'm just wanting to drive around this this uneven ground that I have in the, the storage facility because I want to get an idea for if I notice any big difference. Again, four inches of suspension articulation versus the system that I had before, which really had no articulation at all. Um, the rubber bushing that Dexter uses in the center isn't really much more than a hard piece of rubber. And I've never seen that thing compress, even when I've put a camera on the back of my axle. Now, I do have a camera here. As you guys know, I usually use my new cam to record driving, but I went into the truck and the camera was dead. I should have charged it before we came out here. I do plan on doing some driving videos and uh, recording how the system actually works on regular road driving. But what I can tell you right off the bat is it does feel better. It feels like there's less movement between the trailer and the truck. It's kind of hard to explain, but I guess because of that suspension that you've added in, in addition essentially to the leaf springs that are on the trailer, the back is really cushioned well. I honestly believe that if you got this as an upgrade, not only would it be a great upgrade, but you would want to complement it with a system like the Joyrider, which is going to add the shocks because you just don't want free range of spring movement, just like on a vehicle. The shocks are made to dampen that movement. So far, everything appears really, really solid. I really like how they provide a cross brace in between the two equalizer hangers. And again, it's supposed to add a significant amount of rigidity as well as strength to the overall suspension system. So far, everything's really nice. So now we're out on the road and it feels smooth. You know, I can honestly say that you can't really tell that you're pulling anything behind you. Of course, during acceleration and braking, you can tell you're pulling a, a fifth wheel, but while you're driving, you don't feel any bumps that the trailer generally transfer to the truck. Um, that in conjunction with the hitch, and one thing I have noticed since installing the new BMW fifth wheel hitch, I know I no longer have that clunking noise I used to have when coming to a stop. So obviously I did have a problem with my fifth wheel hitch and um, very, very thankful that BMW swapped it out for me and sent me a brand new one. It really, really helps having that Moride suspension on there. I'm going to pull over here in a second. I've been charging my camera for a little while, so I'm going to connect it underneath so perhaps we can get a little bit of uh, footage of how the system's actually working. So it was no luck on the new cam. Uh, I should have charged it overnight, which I didn't do, and my GoPro's dead, of course. So I am going to charge the camera up, do another video when we take the RV out on driving dynamics, hang the camera underneath it, so you guys get a better idea of what the system looks like when it's working. And I think that it's gonna be something that was really worth my time to put on. Um, I wanna thank my uncle, um, and I also wanna thank the folks at SafeJack. Um, you know, they made a great product. Without that product, I don't think we could have done this. Uh, 
we would have had to take it to a shop. There's absolutely no way we could have lifted up the RV in a fashion safely to do this work. So uh, if you guys are interested in a safe jack, um, definitely recommend it. It is a very, very good product. The quality of it's outstanding and it helped us tremendously when doing this install. So I'll be back with another video, more driving dynamics, how the system's actually working. And hopefully you guys will subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and follow me along. Thanks everyone.